We are not going to allow these institutions to be targeted by people. We. Okay, listen, y'all. Let me let me tell you, we finna put parties aside, cause it ain't it ain't about parties today. A bullet don't know a party, so don't get me started. You just watched Ron DeSantis get heckled when he tried to speak at a prayer vigil held in Jacksonville following an anti-black terrorist attack by a neo-Nazi at a Dollar General. And as Vox explains, on Saturday, a white gunman in Jacksonville, Florida killed three black people at a Dollar General store in what authorities have described as an anti-black hate crime. The shooter wrote a racist manifesto ahead of the attack, used racist slurs in his writings, and drew swastikas on his firearm. Quote, this shooting was racially motivated and he hated black people at Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters said at a press conference, the three victims, two of whom were shoppers and one of whom was a Dollar General employee, are Angela Michelle Carr, 52 years old, Gerald Galleon, 29, and Anolt Joseph A.J. Laguerre Jr., 19 years old. The shooter died of an apparent suicide following the rampage. Now, you couldn't hear the individual things that people were yelling over the booze, but I think it's important to highlight specific reasons why some people were booing DeSantis when he showed up. NPR reports, as DeSantis approached the podium to speak, some people in the crowd began to boo. One person yelled out, you're not welcome here. Later, someone shouted, your policies caused this, according to videos of the event. As governor, DeSantis has loosened the state's gun laws and curbed efforts to teach black history in public schools. And don't forget, he also defended the teaching of the benefits of slavery. Yeah. So when a governor dehumanizes an entire group of people and further marginalizes them to the point where civil rights organizations feel inclined to issue a travel advisory warning people that the state is openly hostile towards African Americans and other disadvantaged groups, I mean, it's not really that surprising to see something like this happen. You could argue it was inevitable because of the climate that DeSantis has cultivated. But now DeSantis is preaching unity and he is pretending to care about the very people who he has demonized throughout the totality of his administration. But I mean, he could say what he wants, but that doesn't change the fact that he has blood on his hands. So let's listen to State Representative Angie Nixon and what she said in response to this violence, because I think that she put it perfectly. Florida, the state and its people condemn the horrific racially motivated murders perpetrated by a deranged scumbag uh, in Jacksonville at the Dollar General store. Uh, perpetrating violence of this kind is unacceptable and targeting people due to their race has no place in the state of Florida. What do you make of that condemnation? What I make of that condemnation is hollow statements. This is a governor who has done nothing but fan, fan these types of, of happenings throughout our, our state. Look, at the, at the end of the day, the governor has blood on his hands. He has had a attack, an all out attack on the black community he, with his uh, anti-woke policies, which we know very well was nothing more than a dog whistle to get folks up and riled up in the way in which it just happened on yesterday. As I listened to him for the first time uh, <laughs> with that statement, I, my, my blood is literally boiling. Myself and other representatives, particularly black representatives throughout the past few legislative sessions, have we have repeatedly told him what his rhetoric was going to do. And that is exactly what transpired on yesterday. This is absurd. It's ridiculous. He is one of the causes to this. This is an agenda that he has been pushing since he has gotten into office. He showed us who he was when he initially ran for governor saying, don't monkey this around, don't monkey this up. Those type of statements, it only leads to things like this. Very well said. And if you're not sure what she's referring to at the end, Ron DeSantis said that we shouldn't monkey this up by electing his black opponent, Andrew Gillum, back in 2018. So you can't even say that he's gone full mask off as governor because the mask was always off. He never had a mask to begin with. So, I mean, watching him get heckled was incredibly satisfying to me because he even just to show up, he has the audacity right to show his face in Jacksonville after that happened. You know, he has... He has a lot of nerve, but I mean, 
There was someone that came to the rescue to stop the crowd from heckling him, and that was Jacksonville Councilwoman Jacoby Pittman. And she explained in a CNN interview that even though she defended him, she also doesn't support his policies. Let's listen. I had no idea that the governor was coming. Um, the uh, MC of the event for that day um, called him up. He was just only was supposed to have been acknowledged as being there. That visual that we did yesterday was a, was not about the governor. And I will say I don't support any of the stances or policies that the governor um, have implemented. You know, my concern yesterday was about the families. It was not a political um, ploy um, for me and our community. It was about focusing on the families that was there and the hatred that had come to their community. And so I just want um, to make myself clear, I wanted the audience to calm down because I wanted him to sit down and I wanted it to be the event that was for the residents and the community that had come together for unity. That's what that event was about, not the governor. Because I don't support what his stance is. Yes. So I understand her not wanting to make this about politics and just wanting to focus on the victims and their families. But I mean, the second that a fascist governor shows up and you then give him the microphone, it then becomes an explicitly political event at that point because you're allowing him to do a photo op when you know that he doesn't actually care when his policies and rhetoric caused this. So I wish that she didn't come to the rescue for him because this tragedy could have been prevented with policies, right? The white supremacist was able to legally purchase the gun that he used to carry out these executions even after he was involuntarily committed to a mental institution. I mean, that right there is a policy failure. This party claims that it's not really a gun issue when it comes to these mass shootings. It's a mental health issue, right? But then again, where's the policies to address that problem? They have none. In fact, in Florida, they actually lead the nation in Medicaid terminations, which is an essential program that also covers mental health. So if anything, the mental health crisis in Florida has been exacerbated by the policies of Governor DeSantis. So this tragedy is the direct result of policy failure on top of policy failure on top of rhetoric that further fans the flames of these types of folks. So, I mean, DeSantis can pretend to be sympathetic now, but everyone knows that it's all an act. And Alejandro Carabayo pointed out that his video response to the neo-Nazi mass shooting looks like a hostage video. But when you juxtapose that with a video of him talking about a group that he hates, in this case, trans youth, you can see that he comes to life. He becomes incredibly animated. Uh, we condemn what happened in the strongest possible terms. You do not take a six-year-old boy and tell him he may actually be a girl. That is wrong, and that is illegal in the state of Florida because of our efforts. Yeah, so he knows what he's doing, right? All of these fascists know what they're doing when they preach hate nonstop. These monotone denunciations from phony politicians isn't going to stop terrorists from doing acts of terrorism. However, on the opposite side of the same coin, constantly pumping people's brains full of hateful propaganda and hysteria, that is going to encourage them to take up violence, right? So where the rhetoric matters is when it comes to the preaching of hate. The denunciations don't actually make an impact when it comes to people's actions. And these fascists know this. And we've kind of been seeing a bit of a cycle where a fascist will encourage violence. And then when violence is actually carried out after they incite it, they feign ignorance, right? We're seeing this at the governor level, but it happens at the grifter level as well. So let me show you what I mean by that. Last week, Libs of TikTok shared an innocuous video of an elementary school librarian calling herself woke and claiming to care about social justice. Now, the post went viral after she shared it, and it was even boosted by the Oklahoma superintendent. But can you guess what happened next? The Union Public School District in Oklahoma was then inundated with bombs.
bomb threats four days in a row at four different elementary school locations. Hmm, I wonder why people were so worked up. But then just a few days earlier, a California chapter of Moms for Liberty, which is another fascist group, hosted an event at a library which resulted in a transphobic speaker being told by the librarian that she wasn't allowed to spew hate speech. The video then went viral on Twitter after a transphobe shared it, and transphobic influencer Riley Gaines responded, also sharing it and saying that she wanted the silent majority to quote, do its thing, and then followed up with the phone number for the library and encouraged people to call. The library was then evacuated because it received a bomb threat. Riley Gaines is now threatening to sue Pink News because they simply reported on it. So I think that it's important to kind of put what's happening into a broader context. We're to the point where the Republican Party and conservatives in America, they are fascist, right? But they're still within that proto-fascist stage for the most part. Some of them have just become outright fascists. But the proto-fascists aren't going to do violence themselves. They're going to get other people to do violence on their behalf. The point is that stochastic terrorists on the right, though, are never going to take accountability after they incite violence against marginalized people. And when politicians like Ron DeSantis continue to stoke the flames again and again, and when you have propagandists fear-mongering about white people being replaced, this kind of violence... It's not surprising. It's expected. And they know that their words are inciting hatred and violence. So for them to, when violence happens, pretend as if they care and they stand with the community, I find that absolutely despicable. So that's why I'm glad that Ron DeSantis was heckled. He shouldn't have even shown up because his words are completely meaningless after he is responsible for this. As Angie Nixon said, he has blood on his hands. And this is not the first high-profile shooting where black people were the specific targets. Last year at a top supermarket in Buffalo, 10 people were killed, 10 lives taken by a white supremacist. And in 2015, in Charleston, Dylan Roof opened fire in a church. He was a white supremacist, he killed nine. So we now have Jacksonville. Not going to be the last, unfortunately. So this situation is, it's heartbreaking. I mean, there's no, no words to really describe how bad and tragic this is. You know, my heart goes out to the families of the victims because these were lives. They di didn't deserve this. One of them was 19 years old. And what makes this so much more infuriating and why I really feel the anger of the people who are heckling Ron DeSantis is that all of this was unnecessary. This tragedy could have been avoided.